Hi, I'm drummer Snappy Smith, and welcome to lesson nine of my couch series. Once again, you and me on a couch with a practice pad going over those great lessons and exercises as taught to me by Freddie Gruber. Now, uh, the last lesson I pretty much laid out uh, the understanding of what the system was that Freddie taught and how that was applied to the hands and the feet. And um, just kind of a recap, basically, uh, there's an up and down technique. So rather than everything just being, you know, all wrist bounces, uh, there's an alternating down, up technique. Uh, you know, a good way to practice this, you know, a lot of drummers, of course, have, have uh, talked about this exercise, is, uh, you know, flam taps, you know, alternating flams. As you're coming up with one, and you're coming down, getting that up and down uh, kind of same concept. And it's a great way to uh, you know, practice that and get a feel for that kind of technique. So um, moving forward, as I explained, uh, what made Freddie unique was that he uh, applied the same technique to the hands as he did to the feet. So while we were going over the Buddy Rich book and the Roy Burns book, and developing our hands, uh, you know, we were also simultaneously working on the Colin Bailey book. Now, uh, this book uh, really taught me a lot, and I think I learned as much about hand technique from my foot technique as anything else. Um, and in this book, you know, Freddie was, uh, we really worked a lot on the feet. Um, went through the whole book, both heel down and heel up, and then also alternating between heel and toe, which is that system technique. Uh, with, the left hand, with the left foot, the hi-hat, uh, we used kind of a Tony Williams technique, which is a, a kind of a skating back and forth. So you've got the same kind of alternating back and forth kind of technique, right? Everything being, you know, in one place is more of a relaxed to have that kind of side to side movement. And uh, kind of gave you that kind of clock kind of, uh, kind of feel. Everything kind of became kind of locked in and kind of moving in the same kind of a systematic way. Uh, so I'll just kind of, to start with, uh, kind of read you some, some of the basic notes that Freddie, uh, you know, kind of had me, you know, kind of wrote down here. Um, basically, a lot of these exercises go from quarter to eighth or eighth to sixteenth. In this case, it's starting with quarter notes. And uh, you play the quarter notes with your heel down. And then on the eighth notes, you come up and you ride from the toe of your foot uh, from the thigh for the eighth notes and then come back down to the heel. And, uh, you know, one of the real interesting or, or important parts of this was, again, that kind of that strike position, that placement. So uh, I'm going to demonstrate something here. <laughs> I'm, I'm always kind of doing things that uh, maybe other teachers don't do. I'm going to teach you bass drum techniques without my feet. And uh, so here's my bass drum pedal. This is what I've been using lately. Um, I've kind of modified a, uh, a pearl pedal. I like the feel of it. I've always used DW pedals, but I wanted to try something different. Um, I did a few things to it. I removed the felt um, kind of pad here because I thought that uh, kind of increased the, um, you know, the radius. So by removing that, I got a little bit more torque out of the pedal. And then I found that the pedal tended to kind of play a little bit forward. So uh, to compensate for that, I determined that the, I think the footboard was just made too heavy. So initially I went and I drilled out holes behind the little cover plate here and try to, you know, in a nice way, kind of re remove some of the metal out of the pedal <laughs> and lighten it up that way. That helped a little bit. I ended up just taking the plate off altogether. So I got this pearl pedal with the plate removed extra holes drilled in and um, it's got a nice nice groove to it all right so uh, I'm gonna demonstrate here with a, with a shoe and uh, basically what you want to you want to set up your uh, your pedal on your bass drum and it's a combination of you know, different size beaters can, can influence the placement of, of, the, of the, the timing of the pedal. Uh, also the tilting of your bass drum, if you want to tilt it a little bit more up or down. But ideally you want to get it so that as you're coming down with your foot, 
You want the beater to strike the bass drum head at the same time your heel is kissing off the heel plate. So you want to kind of get this flat. Again, remember my strike position with my hands? Everything was kind of that flat level, terra firma, he used to call it, ground level feeling. That boom, that's bottom. You want the same thing with your feet, where you want the heel and your ball of your foot and the beater to strike all at the same time evenly. He used to call it kind of kissing, kissing the pedal. So everything kind of came flat. Uh, from that, then of course you ride up from the heel. So you would do your heel exercises. And he, and, uh, he would talk about putting your weight in your heel, um, you know, so that you really kind of were secured in, in, in that way. And a lot of times you can, you, can, you can rock, use your heel as a pivot so that you're really, you know, rocking forward and back that way. And uh, so that's that feeling. So it would be heel exercises. And then as you come up, then you lift from your thigh, you know, you lift your leg up straight. So you're not really necessarily getting into this position with your toe, but still a little bit more of a level kind of a position where your heel is just slightly touching the heel plate, but you're riding from the leg uh, on the balls of your feet in the shoe, right? So this is kind of one, two, right? And then you go into your heel. So it's just it's this rocking motion, rocking up, and then rocking down. And and the way you can make that transition from your heel to your ball of your foot is that if you have that nice level positioning, then when they're hitting both at the same time, it's easy to kind of just kind of rock off the ball of your foot right into your heel. So it's an easy transition from one to the other. So it'd be like one, two, three. Four, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one. Um, so that was basically it. Uh, he would do um, what was called constant release exercises, where the beater would barely, if not even, touch the bass drum head, and it was the same kind of rocking. And what happens you know, over a period of time, you start to find, uh, just as I did, you know, with, with, with the stick, you, know, you kind of find this kind of middle ground, this, this point where, where things are, uh, you kind of find that level point where everything kind of transitions from up to down. And it's this, this is the motion, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, with your hands or your feet, this is basically what the system is. It's this, it's flat and then popping off, and then coming up. So when you practice this thing a lot, you can actually play your bass drum like that. And I'm, I'm able to do pretty fast 16th notes with my bass drum, just like that. And it's the same with your hands. So that's, that's kind of the system, isn't it? It's kind of the... So to further demonstrate the best bass drum technique, um, you know, we would go into now um, to apply the system uh, to basic drum set uh, exercises. Uh, this is the Frank Higgins book, real basic, simple book, but it served its purpose. And um, uh, here he would have me play, uh, you know, basic rock, real simple rock beats. But it was a way to go and train me to do the right. Uh, coordinate the hand uh, system techniques and the bass drum and foot system techniques. And uh, you know, it would sit here, would, you would either sit on the time or lift. So it was always sitting on quarter notes. Sitting meaning kind of your flat foot, heel and toe, bass drum beater hitting, hitting the drum all at the same time, just sitting flat, that's one. And then popping up, rolling up on off the ball of your feet, and lifting up with your leg and your thigh for and. So it's like one, two, and one. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. And one, two, and three. And one, and two, and three. And one, and two, and three. And one, and two, and three. So I know this is kind of an unusual way of teaching bass drum technique, but, um, uh, you know, it seems to be kind of a, 
the only way I can really explain it, sometimes you know, I could demonstrate it with my feet, but it may not really kind of explain things at the same time. Um, so what's kind of cool is, you know, I got so turned on with all this bass drum technique and practicing it and practicing it, I actually ended up um, coming up with a couple of inventions and, and products. Um, I, uh, I invented a bass drum pedal called the Rollor pedal, uh, which had this kind of unique uh, kind of rolling system. I don't know if you can see that. This is the patent I, I came out with way back. But rather than it turning on a... Um, ball bearing, it actually rolled back and forth on a track. And, uh, you know, drummers like Ralph Humphrey and Keltner, they were all kind of checking it out. I think uh, I had John Guerin, they all tried it, Ed Shaughnessy tried it out for a while, uh, just kind of get their opinions and feedbacks, Paul Humphrey. And then, uh, along with that, I came out with another product, an invention called the Balancer. And some of you guys may have seen this. This is a, a counter bass drum weight that I made. Because again, to get the right feeling out of the bass drum, you know, I didn't want to go and have the spring tension too tight because the tighter, you know, you, you want to get a response out of the bass drum pedal. So you, your first thing is like, oh, I'll make the spring tighter. That will give me quicker response and make the pedal go faster, make me go faster. Because it, but the thing is that then you're creating resistance and making it more difficult and making more work to push the pedal down. So um, I determined that a lot of the problem was based on pedal design and weight distribution and that by putting weight you know either in front or behind uh, the beater or the the axis of the pedal you could affect you know basically get a quicker response by having more weight pulling the beater back without having as much tension in the spring so there's a thing I came up with um, the story behind that was uh, that a company called Rhythm Tech uh, saw the product at a NAMM show. Uh, about six months later, they came out with what was called the Rhythm, the, the Balance Beater. It's called the Balance Beater. And it was a bass drum beater that had the little slide beater weight, actually, was what it was. It wasn't actually, didn't actually affect balancing at all, but it was a beater weight. And they called it the Balance Beater, and uh, rather than the Balancer. And... Uh, as a result of that, that became a very popular product. And so a lot of drum companies started saying, aha, uh -huh, maybe all bass drum beaters should have a little slide weight, like the balance beater. And so as a result, I think, you know, I guess I'm kind of partially responsible for why when you buy a bass drum pedal now, there's a little slide weight on it all because I came out with this balancer uh, uh, beater weight system uh, that was designed to actually kind of affect the, the playing of, of the pedal. So, uh, that being said, um, like again, these, these exercises from Freddie made my foot so sensitive that that's what kind of led me to in actually invent a bass drum pedal that kind of seemed to work with that system or ways to kind of improve the feel of the pedal. So that's basically it for uh, how the system was applied to the, to the feet. Um, yeah, maybe one of these days I'll get a kit out and I'll actually kind of, you know, do some playing and you know, but yeah, it takes all kinds of special cameras and things like that. I don't want to get all that. Uh, I think this is kind of a cool way of kind of showing it. Again, it's all about that kind of up and down system. You finding that kind of flat level uh, playing uh, uh, technique to, to where everything comes together, and then it's, everything's kind of above or below that, and you get this kind of kind of working thing going on. And that can, as you can see, can be done with your feet as well as with your hands. And uh, you actually can now, then that applies to your body and your torso. And you can, you'll see a lot of players, uh, you know, uh, the drummer for um, The Tonight Show. Um, you know, a lot of guys, man, they, they kind of get this kind of almost kind of walking, kind of like stepping up on the time. And it's the same thing. And you kind of get that same kind of almost like riding a horse you know, on your seat. So you're actually now, the system is going through your arms and your legs and it's now coming into your torso and your butt and you're actually, your whole body is doing this kind of, kind of strike and release kind of motion. And that's where you kind of really get this whole kind of body groove going and everything is just, everything's just kind of all works together. You know, your hands and your arms and your legs and your torso and everything's just rocking and just in a nice thing. So that's what we all strive for, isn't it? That kind of, that 
great experience where we're playing and everything just kind of feels all together and we're loose and it's just a great time. Uh, so hopefully uh, you guys will benefit from these lessons and some of the information I've given you. And you always can kind of, you know, kind of reach out to me if you have a question or whatever. I'll try to help, help out any way I can. But uh, that's going to be it, I think, for the couch series. I don't know what much more I can, I can really do about what Freddie taught me. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed it. And until uh, next time, keep it snappy. Thanks. Bye-bye.